live, so to speak. Um, we did also deliver this exact same webinar uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday afternoon in uh, European time. Um, it was exactly the same content. So if uh, if you missed yesterday, you're not going to be missing anything. The reason we've done it twice is just so that as many people can join us as possible across the different time zones. Um, we are delighted, as I said, to be working alongside UNODC and specifically the UNODC Civil Society Team or CST to host this webinar today. And it's part of a, a, a long running program of work that we have with the Civil Society Team. So. It gives me great pleasure to therefore hand the floor over to Mirella Dumafrahi, who is the team leader of the UNODC Civil Society team. Uh, so Mirella, over to you for your opening remarks. Thank you, Jamie. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I don't know what to say. I saw even that we have someone from Brazil, so uh, it must be very late at night. So. Uh, yes, as uh, thank you, Jamie, for introducing this webinar. This is the second one we are doing, and we try to have time zone adapted to to allow all participants, if possible, around the world to uh, to choose one of the time zone and participate. Um, I am um, uh, the leading the civil society team in UNODC, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. Uh, we are, have been working uh, closely with the Vienna NGO committee for many years. And today, one of the main uh, subject of this, pre this webinar is to introduce you uh, an update that has been done on uh, the NGO platform marketplace that was launched in um, 2016, one day before the uh, UN General Assembly on Drugs that took place in New York. Um, I am, um, we have, uh, uh, as you know, in this difficult time uh, for everybody, uh, we have been trying to keep uh, uh, the dialogue ongoing through online meeting. Hopefully there will be more hybrid meeting uh, in the coming months. Uh, my uh, the Vienna NGO committee will tell you more in the second part of the session. Uh, and uh, because of the importance of online, we are really pleased that we have the marketplace and that it was possible to kind of upgrade it, uh, it um, Peter later will go into the details uh, to indicate what has been done so that we you can use it more easily and uh, at uh, the most of efficient, the best efficient way you can do. Um, I, I think it is a very important tool. It's an important tool for you as NGO to connect to exchange uh, experience, to, to join in project, but it's a very important tool for uh, government also. And, and uh, I take the opportunity to thank uh, the, the government uh, of, of, um, of the Russian Federation that has contributed financially for on a regular basis for upgrading this, uh, this um, the marketplace. Uh, and joined lately also by the US. Um, this, um, I, I will not uh, go further. I hope uh, that you will like this new version. And especially, I hope that many of you who have registered for this webinar but are not yet on the marketplace will uh, register also on the marketplace. Uh, so uh, I hope you'll enjoy this session. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for joining this seminar. The floor is yours, Peter. Thank you, Merla. Thank you, Jamie. I hope you can all hear, hear me. I'm having some trouble with my webcam, so uh, I won't be able to start that, but I will show you, of course, some of the slides that I have prepared for today's presentation. They should be coming through in just a matter of seconds. So uh, let's begin. The NGO Marketplace is a web platform, as Mirella has said, uh, 
connecting different organizations, non-government organizations, working on drug-related issues. And it has been a joint project for a couple of years between the VNGOC and the UN ODC. Uh, it's, of course, a web platform, so it's kind of like a hybrid between a platform like Facebook, like Twitter, but also a very unique system that's really for the purpose of connecting NGOs working on drug related issues. Um, if you want to visit the platform, it's already online. Uh, you can go to the web address that uh, is here in the bottom left corner, mp.vngoc.org. Um, if you want to send us in the meanwhile some feedback or some maybe thoughts that you might have had, on the right side in the bottom right corner here you will find just two of the email addresses via which you could contact us regarding the marketplace and other issues. So let's move ahead. Uh, what is the marketplace? Uh, again, just to uh, repeat myself, uh, the marketplace is an online platform giving NGOs working specifically in the field of drug policy the opportunity to present their work so they can share day by day what they're experiencing, what their projects are, what their challenges are, maybe some observations that they might have had, something they wish to share with other organizations working in the same areas. Um, these NGOs can use the platform to, to exchange expertise, also to, of course, raise awareness about their work, and perhaps most importantly of all, to network and to communicate. Um, so, a little bit about the history of the projects. Mirela has already said it um, at the beginning that the marketplace has launched pretty much four years ago uh, on April 18th, 2016 uh, in New York, just uh, prior to UNGAS 2016. And since then, we've done a lot of work every single year to gradually improve it. And the reason why we're having this webinar today is because in early August uh, 2020, that's just about one and a half months ago, uh, we have deployed a massively improved version of the marketplace. So we've basically um, uh, rebuilt it from scratch using a brand new technology called Team Cloud Social. Uh, we've completely redesigned the user interface to make it part of the modern age, part of the new decade that has just begun. Um, and just a little bit of a uh, of a note from myself uh, as the project leader behind the development of the marketplace, I can tell you that the technology behind it, this Team Cloud social platform, is available to other organizations and companies as well. So if you would like to have something like the marketplace for the purposes of your organization, you can uh, visit us at www.teamcloud.at. You can drop me a line, and then we can uh, we can talk all about it. So this is open to everybody who's interested. Um, and before I start uh, the live demo of the new version of the marketplace, I would like to show you a couple of very encouraging statistics that uh, we have picked up on. Um, we have launched a new system in uh, very early August, so this is just about six or seven weeks ago. Uh, and as you can see, we are keeping track of how many posts are submitted to the marketplace. These are news posts, so these are the various uh, topics and items of interest that various NGOs are posting every single day. And you can see by the trend line that goes horizontally here that uh, the activity has uh, gradually increased quite uh, uh, quite nicely so. So from the beginning of the statistical calculus at the beginning of January 2018, uh, it has been a steady rise. And just as an interesting bit of uh, detail, uh, you can see that the August of 2020, so the last month before this September here, was our second most uh, active month of all. Uh, that was due to launching the new version, of course. And what's important, what's interesting about this is that August is usually a very uh, kind of uh, inactive month for us. So, you know, you can imagine August is a summer month. Usually people are on, vac on vacation at that time. Uh, people aren't really that involved in uh, maybe uh, posting news items on various social media platforms. They just want to relax a bit in the summer. But still, despite this uh, August being a very tranquil summer month, we've, we saw the second highest acti activity of any month in the history of the platform. So this is a very encouraging sign. And overall, uh, we are on track. Uh, already this number here that you can see in orange has already risen by, I think, four or five organizations since yesterday's webinar. Uh, we are on track to outperform every year prior to, to this one in terms of how many new organizations register on the marketplace. So it seems like 2020 will be our biggest year overall. And this is quite curious because you would think that this number would uh, would be a quickly 
exhaustible quantity since eventually you know every organization that's interested will eventually come on board and this number will gradually decrease but that wasn't the case to our surprise 2020 looks like it's going to be the biggest year uh, that we've ever had and hopefully 2021 will outpace that even more so if you can be part of that upwards trend that very positive trend line that would be very fantastic uh, we've had also uh, undoubtedly due to uh, the new version that we've deployed in August. We've had the biggest <laughs> August in terms of registration that we've ever had. You can see uh, <laughs> last August of 2020 massively outperforming the August of the previous years. So this is a really great sign. I'm wondering, by the way, why there's no August 2019 here. Uh, not sure, it must be just a glitch in the labels, but I think that should be 2019 and that should be 2018 over here. So maybe it just, the column gets shifted by one. But in any case, you can see a very, very encouraging upwards trend on these statistics. So with that in mind, I would now like to move ahead to a live demonstration of the system. If, if you would like to check out the system yourself, you can go to mp.vngoc.org to also check it out yourself. The system is very nicely compatible with very many types of devices. So from your laptops, from your desktop computers, up to mobile tablets and small smartphones. You can use it all the same and hopefully it will look very, very attractive. So let me now switch over. I will have to disconnect from this share and I will have to share another window with you. So in a couple of seconds, hopefully you will see the marketplace appear in front of you as I'm presenting it to you. So while looking through the list of attendees in today's webinar, I saw a couple of familiar faces. We could, we might have bumped into each other at uh, one or two side events in the past, or maybe even at Angas in 2016. So uh, some of you might already be on the marketplace, and if that's the case, you might have noticed if you uh, uh, visited the marketplace in the last six or so weeks that there's been a massive update. Uh, the marketplace now looks very, very different. It looks very clean and elegant. It looks um, it looks appropriate to the new decade, which has just started. And this has been uh, a, a great point of work for us. And we, we've been quite uh, proud to support VNGOC and UNODC on that project. Uh, now the marketplace is fresh. And uh, it's now my uh, honor to show you a little bit of what uh, the new version is all about. So uh, for those of you who are not on the marketplace yet, the marketplace is basically like a hybrid between Facebook, between Twitter and between a platform that more specifically uh, was built for the purposes of connecting NGOs working on drug related issues. At the center of uh, the marketplace, you will find a, a news feed, which is basically uh, many, many news articles. You can see that NGOs have been posting there quite extensively. You can upload photographs, as many as you'd like. Uh, you can upload PDFs. So that, that that one was just posted yesterday by the IOED. So the PDFs can be read in an embedded form. And of course, anyone with access or rather with an account on the marketplace can post articles like that if they relate to drug related issues, if they relate to any of uh, the various challenges that organizations are facing. And in fact, uh, now that the platform uh, is so rapidly growing in, uh, in its usage, we would be very, very happy to have you on the platform as well, to, be, uh, to have you part of the marketplace and to have you post daily updates, weekly updates about the various topics of interest, about the challenges, about the activities that your organization is facing. So again, at the center, you find a news feed, just uh, many, many articles written by many organizations and many items. But if you look here at this bar at the very top, you can see some of the different types of content that you can view on the marketplace. By default, you're just viewing posts, so these are news articles. But if you click on the button events, you will automatically uh, see different events which are posted on the marketplace. So here, for example, we have scheduled for the 4th of November, the 5th European Harm Reduction Conference to take place in Prague. And slightly below that, we have for the 9th of September, uh, the CND Second Intercessional. And you can see that many organizations have been posting events. You could also see a calendar 
in the top right corner and by clicking on one of these items of course you can check out what this event is all about you can even register your interest for it so if i'm clicking on this i will now indicates that I'm interested in that event and I'm, I will even be notified by email uh, a couple of days before the event is to take place that we have an, a, an event that's about to happen that uh, I was interested in. So it's really quite a neat and elegant system to, uh, to bring together different posts, different events. And if you look now to this tile over here, we can now take a look at our huge repository of and our NGOs which are on the marketplace. You can also see that here we have a list and each of these items is an NGO. Uh, we are showing a summary of what the NGO is all about. So like a mission statement, we are showing which people are associated with it in what uh, roles, in what capacities, and we're also showing what services they provide and what services they require. So it's a really nice overview that you can have here. Of course, we have 326 NGOs on the marketplace right now, and if you want to show them in a different way, for example, as a list, you can do that as well. So we can show them as a list that might be a bit easier to browse through if you just look at that. But we can also show them as a grid, so that might be an even more compact way of looking at different uh, organizations. You can also, by the way, show them alphabetically. So if you would just like to browse through them from A to Z, just click on this little option here. Uh, and quite interestingly, we also have a map that appears in the top right corner as soon as you pick the NGO option from the list of contents. So now you can visualize all these different NGOs all throughout the world uh, via Google Maps. Now, we, uh, for uh, diplomatic reasons, we do have to keep this disclaimer at the top. Uh, the map, of course, comes from Google, so we uh, take no responsibility for the various uh, designations that are used on the map. It's just a Google service, but superimposed over Google Maps is our huge list of NGOs which are on the marketplace. And you can see if you if we just take a very broad look at the whole globe, we can see NGOs from all over the world and pretty much all continents from Oceania in the bottom right corner to North America in the top left corner. It's all represented there, all across the Americas, all across Africa, Europe, Asia, uh, and so on and so forth. So it would be great if we could have your icon on there as well. So apart from NGOs, as you can see here, we can also look at people. And these are the people who have been registered on the marketplace who work for specific NGOs or are associated with them. And it's interesting to note that a single person, like for example, Jamie over here, can be associated with multiple organizations in different capacities. So for example, Jamie is defined as the chairperson for the VNGOC and as the senior policy and operations manager for the IDPC. So you can in fact have multiple roles. And if your account is associated with multiple NGOs, you can post content for uh, any of these NGOs separately. So you can, for example, post an update for the VNGOC if you're Jamie or for the IDPC as well. Furthermore, what you can find in the marketplace are projects. So projects are just a way of uh, letting NGOs organize the work that they're doing. So for example, I'm uh, conducting a project in uh, the direction of advocacy, something maybe some kind of um, schooling on the ground or some harm reduction on the ground. I can create a project on the marketplace which encompasses this particular area that I'm working on and I can post regular updates about how this project is getting on, about new new developments, maybe new updates, new interesting bits of information that are happening on the ground. The marketplace makes it very easy, and in just a couple of minutes, I will show you precisely how this is done. So the section updates refers to the project updates themselves. So whenever products are updated, we can see it here in the feed, and the various NGOs have been, um, have been uh, quite intensely at work in that area, posting many, many projects and how they are progressing in these very different aspects. So uh, going back to the posts which I have, you might be wondering, or maybe let's take a look at NGOs. You might be wondering, well, we have 326 NGOs. How is it possible to keep track of all of this? Because that seems like a very large number of different items in the database. Uh, it might be inconvenient to look at all 300 of them in the list, so that might take quite some time before you scroll all the way down and before you find the NGOs that you are looking for. 
But luckily, the marketplace uh, provides many different ways of exploring content and filtering down what you're looking for to find precisely what you want. And for that, I want to draw your attention to the left side of this uh, marketplace uh, website. This dark area over here on the left where it says explore is our filter area. And in here, you can refine what you see on the right side in a variety of ways. For example, by default, we are in the place filter. So by default, this place filter is active. And if you look down below, you can see different continents and inside each continent or underneath each continent, different countries appearing in the list. And next to each country, you will find a number which tells us how many NGOs are registered in that particular country at the moment. And of course, if you're not yet part of the marketplace family, so to speak, we would be very happy to find you among these uh, countries and among the NGOs. So for example, if I'm interested in uh, South American NGOs, I can click on South America and immediately on the right side, uh, the whole marketplace will update and it will show me the NGOs that have been registered in South America. And in this case, we have 13 organizations being placed there. We can also see an updated map with the nine NGOs spread all across the South American continent. We can see posts by South American users. Uh, we can see people working for South American NGOs. We can see projects posted by South American NGOs. So you can see, uh, depending on what choice you make on the left side, the right side of the marketplace automatically updates to show you precisely the content that you're interested in. So uh, what if we want to drill down even more? Uh, we can pick, for example, the services provided filter. And if we select that option on the left side, we will see a bit further below a list of service categories. These are broad service categories that we've decided upon at the very beginning and by which we classify what kinds of services each NGO can be registered to be doing on the marketplace. So let's assume that I'm interested in uh, South American NGOs working in the area of prevention. I can click on the prevention filter and in this case I've drilled down to 10 NGOs working in South America uh, involved in services of prevention. So as you can see, it's really quite easy and quite straightforward to find NGOs that you're looking for if you want to engage in cooperations, if you want to find other NGOs sharing your goals and maybe with which you might uh, exchange best practices or some things that you've learned along the way. The marketplace makes it very easy to, uh, to control all of that, to find precisely what you need. It's just a couple of clicks away. So I will remove all my filters here. Um, this left area also lets you uh, filter down by what kinds of services these NGOs are requiring. So if you want, for example, to find NGOs worldwide who require uh, human rights services, it makes it quite easy. Just click on the human rights filter over here. And now we can see 66 NGOs worldwide requiring human rights related services. In the same way, we have also an area here called contributions towards. And here we have a list of UN declarations and UNGAS chapters, which uh, um, the organizations have pledged to contribute towards. So for example, here at the top, we have the 2019 Ministerial Declaration on Strengthening our actions at the national, regional and international levels to accelerate the implementation of our joint commitments to address and counter the world drug problem. Now that's a very new uh, item on the marketplace. So far we have one organization that has pledged to support it, in this case the VNGOC. But if you wish to declare that you are part of this initiative as well, that you want to contribute towards it, you can do it very easily, as I will show you in a couple of minutes. In contrast to that, we have a much older item. We have the first UNGAS chapter, uh, operational recommendations. And here we have 22 NGOs already declaring that they wish to support or contribute towards this chapter over here. And finally, we have something called trending topic. Now, as you might have uh, noticed before, we can use hashtags in our posts uh, and in the trending topics you see basically like the trending topics on Twitter, a list of hashtags that have been used quite often in all of these posts on the marketplace. So here, for example, we have 17 news articles mentioning COVID-19, the hashtag over here, and you can read all about them. You can read what the various NGOs have, um, have uh, had to say about the issue. And of course, the point is also to encourage you to make your own uh, perspective known to 
put your own stance forward on the marketplace and to contribute to this very lively discussion that we can all have here. So that was basically an overview uh, of the top level of the marketplace, how you can uh, look at the database, how you can check out what's happening in each country, in each continent relating to each individual service. So now let me show you uh, what uh, or rather how each organization is represented on the marketplace. How can you present yourself if you're new to the marketplace? How can you make your organization look very compelling, very relevant in front of other organizations? So for that, uh, I will quickly switch over to an organization that has a very kind of complete profile in, in the sense that it has already uh, put in a lot of information there. Um, and that organization is called Dianova. I think one person from Dianova is attending the webinar today, so you might be uh, delighted to see Dianova uh, take center stage now. What we're looking at right now is an NGO profile. So the NGO profile is kind of like a profile on Facebook, kind of like a profile on Twitter. It summarizes everything that you want to present about your organization to other users on the marketplace. And at the center, of course, you can see all the different posts and news articles and so submissions that that organization has made throughout its history on the marketplace. You can see on the left side, something like a mission statement underneath the name. Um, so you can see, for example, that Dianova is an international network of 24 NGOs operating in the Americas, in Let's Europe, Asia, and Africa, working in the health and social sectors. And underneath that, quite interestingly, you can also specify what kinds of services you're providing. So in this case, Dianova provides prevention, advocacy, recovery, and miscellaneous other services. But you can also specify what services you're requiring. So Dianova in this case requires prevention services, treatment services, and rehabilitation services. And this makes it quite easy to discover in a very quick way what every NGO requires and what every NGO needs. And this might be a very nice way for you to facilitate some kind of partnerships. So if you discover some NGO in an area of uh, of the world where you're involved in matching your own requirements, so to speak, matching your own type of work, you can find them very easily and you can quickly contact, uh, get in touch with them, contact them and maybe establish a mutually beneficial partnership. You can find out slightly down below also various contact details, how to reach them, what areas in the world they're um, headquartered or involved in, um, email addresses, telephone numbers, social media accounts, it's all there. But also a bit further down below, what kind of uh, UN declarations and UNGAS chapters these NGOs are contributing towards. And finally, you can see a list of team members. So in this case, it's Lucia Goberna Lehmann. I think Lucia might be in attendance today. I've uh, seen Lucia on uh, the attendance list and down below you can have partnerships so this is kind of like a friendship a relationship on Facebook you can declare that you're partnering with other organizations and thus you can add credibility and uh, kind of uh, 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 um, maybe reputation to your organization's profile so now I would like to draw your attention to the right side of this um, NGO profile because here something very interesting is possible that I would like to show you. It's, it might be very, very useful to you. You can see an area over here called matching NGOs. And this uh, area here matches other organizations that are requiring the same services that you provide or that this profile provides that you're looking at right now and that are requiring services which the profile you're in right now provides. So this is like a matching algorithm that matches other organizations precisely by provided and required services. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I'm looking right now at the Dianova profile and they are prov they are providing again prevention, advocacy and recovery and other services and they are requiring prevention, treatment and rehabilitation services. So if you look into matching NGOs, you can see that they've been matched against the social worker work hub in Vienna and based on the same area of activity. So both NGOs are active in Vienna and you can see in a black color the services that have been matched against the profile that you're viewing. So here we have a match against prevention, treatment, rehabilitation and against required advocacy and prevention. 
And if you move down the list, you can see all these organizations ranked by how closely they match the profile that you're viewing. So if you want to find out what other NGOs you might be cooperating with, just go to your own profile on the marketplace, check out the matching NGOs and figure out maybe if some kind of cooperation is possible. Or you can even figure out what other NGOs worldwide are matching your own uh, kind of compatibility. If you look a bit further up, you can also see that you can filter this down by different geographical areas. And these are based on the various areas in which you yourself as an NGO are uh, active. So for example, if I want to broaden the scope of the search from Austria to all of Europe, I can click on Europe over here. And now I'm being matched to organizations throughout all of Europe. And we see a different uh, kind of matching happening over here. So you can see uh, this NGO is based in Nigeria, but it's active in Europe as well. So that's why it was matched. This NGO from Milano, Italy is also active, of course, in Europe. And here we have the following matches happening. So you can see it's very, very easy to click on a profile, any profile at all, and figure out what other matching NGOs might be able to cooperate. So if we go back to, I would now love to go back to the VNGOC. So for that, I will just type in the VNGOC or rather the Vienna NGO Committee on Drugs. And now I'm in the VNGOC profile. And now I would like to draw your attention to the list of projects which are listed here on the right side. And again, these are the projects that your NGO can also define by themselves. So if your organization is working on different projects, you can have your projects listed on the right side of your profile in the same way that it's happening here. In this case, the VNGOC is running two projects, a webinar on the World Drug Report for civil society. If we click on that, we can see all the updates and all the posts that have been posted as part of this project. And the second project is called Develop NGO Training and Professional Development Strategy. And here we can also see various updates about that project. Now, if you wish to post an update about the project, you just click on Compose. You just update the project's, uh, the project status. You can, you can set whether it's planned, in progress, or completed. You type in some kind of update, status description, and then you just attach maybe some files, some PDFs, some photos, and you click on Submit to send the update on its way. And that's as easy as it is. So just to show you how easy it is to post any kind of update on the marketplace, I will do it right now. I will click, instead of posting a project status update, I will just post a regular kind of news update. I will type in a message. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be a member of the hash marketplace. You can see that we can use hashtags over here, just like you would use it on Twitter or on Facebook or anywhere else. You can use hashtags to um, put topics together to uh, engage in discussions surrounding specific issues. You can then go down and upload attachments. Um, so these might be PDFs, these, these might be presentations, they might be photographs, anything that you might wish might uh, indicate to others what specifically you mean or what you're working on. And finally, just click on Submit to send the news article on its way. Now, as you can see over here, I've posted my news article. I've posted my hashtag slash hash marketplace. But before this news item appears on the marketplace, it first has to be approved by the NGO marketplace team. So in a couple of moments, maybe Sarah will either reject or confirm my little item over here. Uh, and if you do it yourself, it usually takes maybe a couple of hours at most before your post is available for all other users on the marketplace as well. So it's a very easy thing. If you want to post events, just click on the events button over here. Just give your event a title. For example, this is the webinar about the marketplace. You can pick a date and time interval. So for example, the webinar takes place from Monday to Tuesday from 10 in the morning until 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And then optionally, you can also specify an address for it. If you scroll down, contact details, web addresses, social media accounts, you can specify all of that. And of course, a description. So this webinar 
is supposed to teach incoming users about the slash marketplace. You can further upload attachments if you wish. And finally, you can click on submit. And as soon as you do that, and as soon as your event is approved by the marketplace moderation team, it becomes part of the calendar and everybody can take a look at it as well and plan their own calendars against it. So just as it was very easy to make a new event, you can also make a new project. You just give your project a new name, for example, NGO Marketplace Teaching Project. Sorry to interrupt, Peter, but I think you have to wrap up. All right. So, Thank you. All right. So I'll make it quick. Um, just two more minutes. You can imagine it's quite easy to add content here. Uh, just two more minutes. I want to show you how easy it is to get started with the marketplace. For that, I will have to log out of the VNGC account. So if you're not yet on the marketplace, if you're a new user to the platform, you can simply click on sign up in the top right corner. And here you can create either a profile for your organization or for a specific individual. So if your organization is already on the marketplace, you can add a new team member by creating a personal profile. Otherwise, the first starting point would be, of course, to create a new NGO profile. You type in your email address, your, uh, I will use myself, you, you are given a password or you can choose one by your own uh, choice. And then you simply have to specify where you're located. So for example, I will say that I'm in Austria and what services you provide or require. So I, for example, provide research services and I require perhaps uh, criminal justice services or something. Then just confirm the privacy policy, create a profile, click on the button over here, and you're part on the, of the marketplace. It's as easy as that. And before I give the floor over to Mirella, I just want to mention one final thing. Apart from how easy it is, of course, to become part of the, of the marketplace, if you click on the logo in the top left corner, you have an item here called training video. Now we are quite proud of this because we've worked quite a long time Welcome to make to this possible. Team. This is a 14 minute and 20 seconds training video, which introduces you to all different parts of using the marketplace. So if you're ever unsure about how to use specific aspects of the system, you can always go to the training video. You can even go down here in the description to various time signatures, and you can always uh, find information about the topic that you're interested in. Finding other organizations. So with that in mind, it would be great again to have you part of the marketplace. I would really be happy if you registered your account and if you became part of the community. This is really the time for the marketplace to get to the ne next level now that it's so nice, now that it's so refined. It would be great to have you part of the team. So thank you very much. And with that, the floor is back to Mirella. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, I think I'll, uh, if it's okay with Morello, I'll take the floor from here. And thank you so much for that presentation. It is great to see that um, I think you said that uh, quite a few organisations have actually signed up since the webinar that we did yesterday. So um, that's uh, that's a positive sign, and we hope that um, some of you who are joining us today also now visit the marketplace and register your organisation. It only takes a few moments to do. Um, it's a great platform to be on. It's a great opportunity for other NGOs to to know more about you and to introduce themselves to you and vice versa. Um, so uh, just a couple of uh, I, I've just been looking through the chat as as you've been presenting, Peter, and there's obviously lots of comments in there, but I've been trying to pull out um, any specific question. There, there is one in here from um, Monica. Uh, saying, um, if you were already registered on the old marketplace, are you automatically also on this new marketplace? And Peter, I think the answer to that is yes, isn't it? Everything was transferred over, Absolutely. so all the existing profiles still exist. Absolutely. Although if you've uh, registered a long time ago, you might have forgotten your password. In that case, on the login page, you have a link there where you can recover your password so that you can hopefully get back to the marketplace uh, quickly. The only thing that you really have to remember is under which email address you've registered. If you know that, you can request a reset of your password and then hopefully you can get quickly back into the marketplace. OK, fantastic. Thank you, Peter. I hope that helps, Monica. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I don't see any other questions. I mean, there is still obviously time. We we uh, we we're, we're still we're about halfway through uh, this particular webinar, so there's still time if you have questions later. Um, but Sarah has also very kindly been sharing all of the uh, links, including the link to the training video. 
Um, and at the end of this webinar, you will also see our contact details and Sarah can share our contact details and maybe Peter, you can also share yours in the chat. So if you do have any questions or any technical problems or any other uh, issue that you um, that you experience with Marketplace, please let us know. Um, you know, we really want this to work for you. I mean, this has been this has been created to have added value for NGOs. So um, we really encourage you to take a look and, and spend some time uh, to register yourself and engage um, with the marketplace. So without further ado, um, I'd like to hand over now to my fellow BNGOC board member, um, Penny Hill, who is our deputy secretary at the Vienna NGO committee, but also uh, formerly a representative here of Harm Reduction Australia um, on the BNGOC board. Um, Penny is going to talk us through uh, some of the upcoming opportunities at the UN Commission on Narcotic Drugs. So Penny, over to you, and I think you're going to also share your screen. Is that right? Uh, yes, have I got the correct one? Yep, that, that looks perfect uh, to me. Yeah, that looks good. Thank okay, you thank you very much, uh, Jamie and everybody for having me uh, present at the webinar today. Um, so my name is Penny. I'm based in Melbourne in Australia. I am a I am the Deputy Secretary of the VNGOC and I've been on the board um, since 2019. Um, I'd just like to say that I am attending this meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Um, I'd like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, any First Nations people that might be attending this webinar today. Um, so the topic for my presentation is upcoming CND meetings and how to engage and I will give a little bit of background as well on um, the VNGOC and the Commission on Narcotic Drugs for people that may not be as familiar as others. Um, so the VNGOC was established uh, as a formal link between NGOs and the key UN agencies involved uh, in drug policy, which are the UN Commission on Narcotic Drugs, the CND, uh, the International Narcotics Control Board, the INCB and the UN Office of Drugs and Crime, the UNODC, um, among others. So we work alongside these agencies as the VNGOC, but also with some other NGO committees, which include our committees, um, other committees based in Vienna and also our sister committee on drugs in New York. So we ensure that these meetings or the CND meetings remain accessible to civil society, both for our members, but also for NGOs. Uh, this includes producing annual guides to the CND, organizing open questions and answer sessions um, between NGOs and the heads of the key UN agencies that I just mentioned before. Uh, we also communicate any news and developments to NGO representatives, uh, host the NGO market marketplace that Peter's just uh, presented for us today, and we also issue calls for NGO speakers for UN meetings. So it's the latter that I will focus on for my presentation today, those calls for speakers. So the board is selected, our VNGOC board is selected by our paying members at a meeting held at the main CND session, uh, which occurs around March every year. Uh, so what is the Commission on Narcotic Drugs? The CND is one of the several functional commissions of ECOSOC. ECOSOC is the UN Economic and Social Council, which deals with all economic and social issues within the UN system. Um, I'm going to try my best not to use so many acronyms today, but this is something that does pop up in our sector a lot. So I'll try my best to explain anything and really happy to answer any questions. So officially, um, the CND is just uh, 53 member states, but in reality, every member state can participate in CND, CND sessions. NGOs can participate as observers, especially those who have consultative status with uh, ECOSOC. So as I mentioned, the main CND meeting occurs in March or, or April sometimes, usually for about a week. Um, that main, uh, and then we also meet um, in smaller CND sessions, which are called intersessionals, which I'll, I'll give a little bit of background about in the next slide, um, which occur throughout the year. So NGOs can attend all of the formal meetings that are on the CND agenda. Um, and there are also informal meetings held for governments, which NGOs usually cannot attend. So at CND meetings, uh, predominantly the, the main ones that occur in March, the um, member states present their positions, negotiate and adopt resolutions on the direction of global drug control and vote on proposals to change how substances are scheduled uh, following recommendations from the World Health Organization. Uh, I just 
put in a slide that we had um, as part of our um, AGM at the VNGOC uh, meeting this year, which just highlights some of the speaking opportunities that we had in 2019. So 2019 was a big year for the CND. It was a year that had a, a high level segment, which was the ministerial segment, which occurred for a couple of days leading into the, the main CND session in, in March. So we had a range of different opportunities for NGO speakers to present at last year. And I think, I don't have it on the slide. I think it was about nine different sessions um, for which we received about 300 applications and we were able to successfully select 53 speakers and um, had 20 of 28 of those speakers actually funded by the VNGOC to attend this the session and um, do their presentation uh, on behalf of their NGO. Uh, so predominantly last year, about 70% of the presentations were done in person. Um, as we know, 2020, there will be a lot of um, hybrid sessions coming up and online sessions. So I'm glad we got that started in 2019 now that we will be having so many online sessions. But it's actually a really great opportunity as this uh, the VNGOC NGOC is a global committee to have people that might not be able to um, get across to, to Vienna for the sessions to be able to engage in the sessions, um, whether or not they're main sessions or, or special sessions. Um, so just for a little bit of background on the thematic intersessionals, which are um, the the one for this year is actually uh, coming up soon. In 2019, um, at that high level meeting that I mentioned before, the member states adopted a ministerial declaration, which included a paragraph on the remaining challenges that they face within uh, international drug policy commitments. And through this process, uh, they developed a CND work plan to get us through to the midterm review in 2024. So uh, the remaining challenges uh, will be discussed in these annual thematic intersessionals each year leading up to 2024. You can read further um, into the topics. There was already so many words on this slide. I, I wanted to kind of generalize the topics by year, um, but I, I believe the CND work plan would be available on the VNGOC website. Otherwise, we'll make sure there's a link um, for bit more information uh, but you can um, but for this presentation I've just kind of generalized the topics so 2019 the main focus was the uh, was supply reduction the one we have coming up in a couple of weeks in October is a health focus so these thematic intersessionals um, tend to occur I, I believe in the work work plan it's termed as the, the autumn intersessionals obviously for those of us down here in the southern hemisphere that's that's spring for us but they do Tend, tend to occur around October. Um, so despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the CND Secretariat have been working hard to continue discussions and fulfill this work plan. Most meetings have been shifted online um, and are held via Microsoft Teams where we are today, um, but really happy to say that most of the spaces for civil society to engage have been kept open. So we're really happy about that. Um, another slides with, with slide with a lot of words on it, um, but these are the specific upcoming CND meetings where we do have um, calls for the first to open right at the moment that are open for a couple more days for um, NGO speakers to apply to speak at um, these sessions. So the first one that's coming up um, uh, soon at the beginning of October is uh, the second intersessional meeting, which is on the topic of the World Health Organization recommendations on cannabis and related substances. So in 2019, after a long review, the WHO made a series of recommendations to the CND to reschedule cannabis and cannabis related substances. This has been debated debated at uh, various CND meetings since then. And this intersessional coming up in a few weeks um, we, we do have positions available for NGO members to speak at. This particular session will be a hybrid in-person and online event. Later on in October, just a couple of weeks later, we will have the annual thematic intersessional for this year. As I mentioned before, in 2020, it's a kind of a health focus to these key topics, and it will include um, drug treatment, harm reduction, new psych psychoactive substances and access to essential medicines, as you can see on the slide. And then uh, in December, we'll also have another meeting at the reconvened, which is the recon reconvened session uh, in December, where the actual vote on the cannabis rescheduling recommendations is due to take place. Uh, so, and then just the final one on the slide we have is the, um, the next uh, main CND session, which is usually held in March, but has been pushed back a little bit later to for April for next year for the 64th session to leave space for the rescheduled UN Crime Congress in Kyoto, which is occurring in March. Um, so, 
in terms of selecting speakers for all of these um, events, we do actually have quite a, a strict agreed selection criteria. So these criteria were agreed upon uh, in the lead up, I believe, to the UN uh, the UNGAS session in 2016, where the Vienna and the New York NGO committees came together to create this set of guidelines for selecting speakers and the full sets available on our website. It is quite a difficult process and there's often um, too many good abstracts for the spaces available and we do have to make some tough de decisions. Uh, the criteria are available on the screen um, and these are what we tend we we are guided guided by to consider um, the applications. So our goal is to secure the broadest, most comprehensive and balanced participation of civil society at each session. Uh, we have to try and maintain, uh, sorry, try and achieve balance in terms of gender, regions, themes and ages. Uh, of course, it's not always possible to achieve balance, uh, but our commitment is always to strive to do this uh, to our best. Um, I'm not sure where I'm at for time, but I'm I'm also uh, almost finished. We did have some guidelines um, for any people who are considering submitting abstracts to some of these upcoming sessions. Uh, so I'll just go through a couple of kind of key points. Um, as we do have so many uh, now opportunities for civil society speakers to um, present, we do hope that uh, applicants read the call for speakers really carefully and, and are aware of what the topic is, what the opportunity and how it matches to your specific work. So we do ask that you apply for relevant opportunities um, and, and don't apply for every opportunity. Sometimes we do see NGOs applying for absolutely everything and, and sometimes also sending through the same abstracts they've already sent through in the past um, but you're you've got a much better chance of being selected if you um, have uh, really uh, defined your your abstract and made it really uh, relevant to the actual topic um, please complete all sections of the form really carefully um, we do sometimes tend to have really short time frames for these calls for speakers and um, Sarah does it absolutely brilliant job um, keeping in touch with a lot of applicants and, and giving us information, but we don't always have time to get back to people if they might have skipped questions in the application. So definitely complete every section. Um, please present yourself clearly, mention your experience and expertise relevant to the call. Uh, sometimes we do get applications that just kind of give general info on, on your work and, and sometimes tend to just say what we can kind of find out about your organization on your website but this is an opportunity to really tell us why you specifically why we should pick you pick you to speak in this actual specific session uh, the abstract itself is usually quite short it's usually 150 words so please be clear and concise relevant to the theme and try and outline what member states stand to learn from your specific intervention so please focus right in on the topic um, and then also just for just about every application that that we're we're able to do, please um, ask others to proofread and review your application and and give feedback. So please don't leave it to the last minute. Give it, give us as much um, information as possible relevant to um, to the topic that you would like to present on. Um, so just to kind of summarise, why engage with the with a CNG, a CND as an NGO representative? As we mentioned before, the CND is a central UN body concerned with drug policy. It makes decisions every year which impact upon policies and approaches at the national, regional and international levels. Member states repeatedly uh, tell us how much they appreciate and need the representation of civil society. So we bring the voices from the ground and um, and the real life experiences of the world drug situation and important evidence and examples of programs that change and save people's lives. At the same time, civil society has an important role in evaluating and critiquing governments done in a very diplomatic way, of course. Speaking at a UN meeting is also a great moment of exposure and promotion for your NGO. Many NGOs record their interventions, share them on social media or YouTube and upload them to their websites. Um, when, and then we also have a slide um, just on our kind of for our links to our VNGO page, v VNGOC pages. I did actually want to mention on this slide that this is actually where you find the information on the calls for speakers. So please sign up. Um, if you're a VNGOC member, you should um, actually receive the calls for, for speakers, but you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter, look at the website, and of course, follow us on Marketplace to find those call calls for speakers. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Penny. If you just flick through the slides, because I think there's a final slide, isn't there, with the contact details? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, no, which which we can just then leave up. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, thank you, Penny. Thank you so much for for running through that um, presentation. And um, the presentations will be made available on our website. Uh, I've seen a few people have um, have requested that. Uh, so we'll make sure that both Penny's presentation, but also the one from Peter is available on the website and obviously there's also the training video which we link to um, and and all the other resources that we provide. Um, so yeah, we, we've got uh, the deadline for the existing calls for speakers uh, for the meetings in October. The deadline is Friday the 25th um, of September, so we have a few days remaining. Uh, conscious of Penny's advice not to leave it to the last moment, we always, whenever we set a deadline, uh, the majority of the abstracts always come in the night before or, or just a few hours before the deadline. Um, but we do recommend, you know, writing an abstract and you only have 150 words. Writing an abstract uh, can be is tricky. It's tricky to, to get all the points across that you want to make uh, in that in that space. Um, you know, so we do recommend, uh, for example, one of the things I do when I'm submitting an abstract is I'll write it and I'll share it with a few people and ask them just to give me their comments and to give me their thoughts. So, um, you know, we recommend that kind of, um, you know, that kind of process just to make sure that what you're saying is as clear as uh, as possible. So we have some time now for questions um, and uh, flicking through the, the chat and thank you everyone for engaging you know all of those who have engaged uh, in the chat um, while Penny was presenting um, and I've tried there's a lot of technical questions about the marketplace which I think Peter's actually responding to um, as we go which is great um, but uh, one of the questions that came up was how do NGOs uh, how can NGOs get supported financially to reach out to communities where they are based um, now, obviously, the, the marketplace itself and the VNGOC, we, we are not in a position, unfortunately, to provide funding to NGOs and our members. Um, uh, but I wonder, maybe Mirella, could we could I could I pass the floor to you on this question and to see um, just to have your comments on this? And I can repeat the question if you'd like, Mirella. Yes, no, thank you. I think I, I was listening to what you were saying. Uh, it's of course uh, a question that comes back, especially in difficult time, and uh, we we have to realize that the challenge that are coming ahead also for for all NGOs uh, after co during and after COVID. Um, uh, what uh, what we can do uh, because uh, we do not also have like specific funding for uh, for just NGOs, but uh, as uh, the UN power is really to connect and conv con convene uh, everybody so that uh, there is uh, more visibility on the importance of the work that uh, that uh, the NGO are doing and how essential it is to continue funding this work. Um, I'm um, a bit thinking loud, but uh, again, the, the, we shouldn't forget that uh, while it's true that the NGO uh, platform, the marketplace was uh, requested by NGO, it is. It was also uh, a requirement for member states because it allows us allows them to have an overview about the work you do. So I, I think uh, we would give uh, one one month's time or a little bit more to all who wants to have their profile added, be added in the marketplace, and maybe do a similar uh, presentation to. Uh, to, to government and potential uh, donors. Uh, again, let's not forget that among uh, the, the, the the NGO or their foundation. So uh, by being also present in the marketplace, you 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 give possibility for uh, some uh, NGOs to to fund you. Those who have the the possibility. But also maybe we could present it to, to member states and more ideas can come. Um, yeah, um, it's not a, a, a silver uh, you know, solution, but I think, uh, yeah, bronze one, let's put it this way. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mirella. And um, 
Yeah, and uh, there's another question as well, which which maybe Mirella can uh, can also uh, help with. A uh, question from Afghanistan. Um, is there any possibility of getting information material about anti-drug issues for our home school in Afghanistan? Um, now, one thing I would say is that the marketplace is a good opportunity to connect with other NGOs, including other NGOs in Afghanistan. Um, so, uh, you know, I would recommend that you engage with the marketplace, make those connections with other NGOs that may be able to to uh, share and send materials that you can use. Um, I don't know, Mirella, from the UNODC civil society team side, is there, are there materials that you're able to disseminate? Uh, yes, uh, sure. I, I will coordinate with our um, uh, prevention and uh, team uh, in-house they have uh, certainly material uh, so um yeah sarah will will give me the contact of this ngo and we will uh we will try to send them some material if possible thank you jamie you need to put the mic on Sorry, thank you. I uh, did that yesterday as well. Um, I'm just looking through the other uh, questions that have been submitted, and I think some are being answered as we go, which is great. Um, but just to clarify, do NGOs need to have ECOSOC status, uh, which is the high, like a higher level of uh, registration with the UN system? Do they need to have that status to apply for a speaking slot? The answer is no. Uh, you don't need to have that status. You don't even need to be a VNGOC member, although obviously you're very welcome to join the Vienna NGO committee. Um, but our calls for speakers are very deliberately open to all NGOs. Um, so we try to make it as low threshold as possible. So you do not need to be uh, EcoStock status registered uh, to apply. Um, and uh, I'm just looking for a question about the the abstract dead, uh, the abstract limit. Yes, it is 150 words or 600 characters. Um, I know that's not a lot. And it's deliberately not a lot. You have to imagine it from our side as the VNGOC board. For these um, for these applications that are currently open, and the deadline is Friday, the 25th of September, we'll, we will probably receive somewhere around 100 applications. Um, so we need to limit the word count on each one to make it a more manageable process. And we find that the lower word count really helps people um, to focus in on what is the main topic that they want to present on. Um, and that's why I do encourage you to plan your abstract carefully, draft it carefully and ask your colleagues and uh, and friends to have a look at it first um, to make sure that it's uh, to make sure that it's clear. Um, some questions from uh, from um, Jean-Luc, if I can just reach those quickly. Um, so what are the advocacy priorities for NGOs, NGO networks during the next CND? Um, so, I mean, the next CND is is just a regular session. Uh, we, we anticipate it will be in April 2021. Um, so I think the advocacy priorities depend on the NGO in question. Um, and CND is always an opportunity to uh, highlight any issues that you want to raise from your from your perspective, there will be the usual processes. There will be the opportunity to speak, the opportunity to submit interventions uh, and make written statements. Um, and uh, also the member states will be discussing a series of resolutions um, that they'll be negotiating during the CND. At this stage, we don't know what those resolutions are. Um, the deadline to submit the resolutions is not until the new year. So we don't actually know at the moment uh, exactly what the topics um, will be uh, of those resolutions. So we have to wait and see on that particular one. Um, and the second part of your question, can the VNGOC participate in influencing policymakers in member states? Um, to answer that question, I mean, quite honestly, no. Um, the VNGOC is here to be a neutral platform for a very broad range of different NGOs and a very broad range of different advocacy priorities. Um, our job, or you know, certainly the way that we perceive our role, is to empower civil society and to link them with the UN processes. And that includes linking them and helping them connect with their member state representatives at the UN, but involved in a national level uh, advocacy or, or um, influencing campaign. 
Um, that's the work of the NGOs, our NGO members to do. Uh, the VNGOC's role is to be the umbrella organisation and to and to make sure that space exists. It's not necessarily our, our role to um, to occupy that space, so to speak. Um, so I hope that answers those questions. Um, and I'm just quickly looking down. There's a few more technical ones. I, I think that is it in terms of questions. Um, but one thing I did want to add, um, and I can't remember if I said it, but if I didn't, thank you very much, Penny, for the presentation. Um, but one thing to add is around the language. Uh, we discussed this slightly yesterday as well. So the marketplace website uh, is can be available in different languages. There's a we use Google Translate to translate the content. Um, it's not perfect, uh, and we acknowledge that Google Translate is not perfect, um, and it seems to be slightly better for some languages than others. But it is a really good um, accessible way to uh, to make the platform work for you. So the marketplace, you should be able to view that in any of the languages that Google Translate um, uh, deals in. And similarly, for the um, abstract submission, if you want to apply to speak, obviously the working language for the Vienna NGO committee is English. Um, and we will be reviewing the abstracts in English. But you are free to submit your abstract in another language, um, particularly if English is not your first language or you feel more comfortable in other languages. You can submit in another language and then what we will do is we will use Google Translate to uh, to look at your abstract. And again, we acknowledge that it's not perfect, but it's good enough that we will understand what it is that you want to present about, what it is that you want to say in your uh, in your intervention. So um, that's an option. Again, we you know if you look if you recall Penny's slide around the different criteria that we use uh, when trying to select speakers, language is not one of them. You know, and we really want to make sure that these calls for speakers are as um, you know are as open as they possibly can be. You know, as as much as practically possible. But one limitation on that. Most UN meetings uh, are translated into the six UN languages. Um, not all of them are. And I, I'm, I, I, it's, I'm not actually quite clear. Maybe Mirella can help uh, whether these two meetings in October, whether these intersessions in October will be in all six UN languages or whether they're just in English. If you do want to still submit a, make a submission and make an intervention in another language other than English, that's still possible. But we'll have to do it by a pre-submitted video that we can then support you to add subtitles to. Um, so you know, again, we're not. Yeah, I just wanted to, to jump in. Yeah, go on, Penny. As well, Penny. and yeah, just just on that point that um, even if translation isn't av available available in the actual meeting that it is um, that you are presenting in, we have done our best in the past to facilitate the use of videos, especially with a lot of people joining online. Um, if if you can get the subtitles in, so we are really trying to do our best there. Yeah. And you know, there's other. You know, we've done we've done as much as we can in the past. We've we've supported with subtitles. On on a rare occasion, uh, a member of the VNGOC board can read out a statement on behalf of another NGO if they're unable to do that themselves. So you know, we our commitment is to try and is to open this space and to give you an opportunity to have your voice heard. And we will do our best to make that possible, regardless of language. Um, that's that's kind of our commitment. Um, OK, well, there's no other questions that I can see. Uh, you have our contact details. They're actually on this slide as well, which is great. Uh, so you can get in touch with the BNGOC uh, with any questions you may have, any follow up questions that, that you may have. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we thank you very much for joining the webinar today. Um, and especially a huge thank you to Mirella and the UNODC Civil Society team for their ongoing support. A huge thanks to Peter for his presentation and also, of course, for all the work that uh, Team Cloud have been doing on this marketplace to turn it into this version that we have now, which, uh, you know, I think is 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 really fantastic. Uh, also, huge thanks to Penny for joining us from Australia and, and giving that presentation as well. And and last but by no means least, a huge thanks to Sarah Perker from the BNGOC. Uh, for all of our support behind the scenes making this webinar happen so you know we couldn't do it without sarah so thank you very much uh, the presentations will be online we um we do encourage you as we said please do engage with these calls for speakers 
please do engage with the marketplace. Take a few moments this afternoon or, or, or later this week to uh, to register your organization or reactivate your registration if you need to remember your password. Um, and give us your feedback. Uh, we've also got a feedback form about this webinar. We really want to hear your thoughts about this webinar. Uh, it will help us to uh, to do things, you know, to to deliver future webinars and to keep improving. Uh, Sarah has shared the link in the in the chat. Um, it's an anonymous survey, so please, you know, just take a few seconds to fill that in. Um, and otherwise, we look forward to speaking to you soon. And thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.